Rick Spielman, Tyler Sullivan in to break this one down as well. Uh, fellas, NFC North for one more week at least will remain up for grabs. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. But I think what was telling in this game is we knew Detroit could score points in bunches here, but the defense over the last couple weeks here and over this stretch has performed far more uh, execution on that side of the ball. Rick, what have you seen defensively out of Detroit that's really spurred this nice little streak of wins? Yeah, and I have maybe a little bit of an inside source since my brother works for him, so I <laughs> talked to him a little bit about, you know, why the defense has started to play better. That Well, they got back to what they were built to do, and that is the kind of two-gap up front, let your playmakers at the second level run and chase the ball, and they did a great job today. I think the Vikings only rushed for 22 total yards on offense, so that was critical. Now, they still have some holes on the defensive side, especially in the secondary. You saw J.J. have a huge game today. Cousins threw for over 425 yards and had a big game. Uh, but what's the difference is their defense is playing better. And if their defense would have played like this and they would have kept to the scheme and to the philosophy that they had now, that if they would have kept that earlier in the season, who knows where their record would be. But they're on a pretty good run right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to play the way they're playing, that they may sneak into that last spot mm. as a wild card team. Yeah, I'm right there with Rick. I mean, it is one of the bigger what-ifs of the 2022 season with the Detroit Lions defense. If they had been playing to this level that we've been seeing over the last few weeks, we're not talking about them maybe sneaking into the playoff conversation. They're fully in it. They would be inside that bubble to actually be a playoff contender in my estimation. And you talk about all the stats of them being able to shut teams down, especially against the pass, not so much in this game. But one thing that did carry over a little bit was their ability to create turnovers over this winning streak or this this run that they've been on. They've been tied for first in the NFL with takeaways. They had two of them again today. If all of a sudden you're getting a nose for the football in that regard and you're giving the ball on a short field to this offense that's been able to post 30-plus points over the last few weeks, that's a dangerous opponent down the stretch. So I'm at Rick. This team could be very dangerous down the stretch and all of a sudden – enters that playoff conversation, but they would have been there sooner if this defense really shaped up earlier. All right, let's talk about this Viking side now, guys, because uh, coming off a big win against the Jets, a closely contested game that they showed some of that metal that you need come postseason time. Uh, I'll once again defer to the man with the tenure and knows the franchise very well here, Rick. What's going on right now when you suffer a loss like this at this point in the season and you're really just trying to rally the troops, get that divisional title out of the way and feel that confidence moving towards the playoffs. Us as fans, analysts, we always give pause when it comes to the Vikings at this point of the season and here they kind of uh, justify that feeling once again. What do you see in this team as you project them towards playoff time? Yeah, wh what the issue with the Vikings right now isn't the offense and what they're doing, although I did question that little trick play when mm -hmm. they should have just handed the ball off early in the game. No doubt. Uh, instead of Dalvin Cook fumbling when he was trying to, and I didn't know why they went for two. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is the analysts that say this is a time of game to go for two. Not I would just kick the extra point <laughs> and move on in life. What the issue is with the Minnesota Vikings right now is their defense is giving up. They're 31st or 32nd in pass defense. They're not very good, although they made some turnovers in the red zone. Um, but last week they struggled a little bit if, if the Jets don't drop that ball in the red zone. But they really have to pick up their defense. And I know Ed Donatel likes to play that shell defense, that soft bend-don't-break coverage. But if you play... Uh, a Philadelphia Eagles team again, or even like the way the Detroit Lions are rolling right now, they might be one of the most efficient, explosive offenses in the NFL. And you've seen they gave up almost 500 yards today. A playoff team that goes far usually can run the ball, and the Vikings weren't able to do that today, and they can play defense. And they're not doing either of those, that, what they showed today. Yeah, if it's Ben, don't break. They're bending the tune of 400 plus yards in five consecutive games. And this time around, it's the Lions offense getting it done, whether it's on offense, through the air, on the ground, trick plays on special teams, tackle eligible, however you want it. That's how they got it. Uh, last six games, now five and one. After plenty of folks were calling for Dan Campbell's job, they're scoring 29 points per game, holding teams to about nine less, exactly nine less, and a turnover differential only growing by the week.
Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.